All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about why a PDW actually makes sense. Now, there are some videos that I've watched recently essentially saying that, you know, if you run a PDW, if you have one, if you even buy one, you know, to own that essentially you are a, you know, like LARPer, you are fake. And ultimately, they try to kind of really make it out to seem that, you know, having something like a PDW is just for posers, basically. There's no practical function to having a small AR, whether it be pistol or rifle. Now, people have said, especially with SBRs, that people that have SBRs are just posers and fake. And to be fair, I think that the frustrating reality to SBRs, at least in the country of the US, is a little bit um, harder because of the fact that SBRs are saddled with a lot of unnecessary regulation. So this one here, of course, is a pistol. Legally, it has a brace on it. And I think that this is probably the best way to run them even though SBRs are nice and then you can fit whatever stock you want on it and at a flat range in shooting in practice they're, they are superior to a pistol like this. This is still legally a pistol so that means that you get all of the nice laws regulations regarding pistols regarding concealed carry um, regarding all of that stuff and so once it, as we go further into this video you know mentioning use cases like a pack gun is something that can be tricky for an SBR because of the fact that it may actually fall outside of legal use or carry of an SBR, whereas a pistol, of course, is designed to be concealed and putting a pistol in a pack to carry it concealed is a totally realistic thing. And so this being a pistol makes it a lot more, um, it makes it align with laws better. So once again, I think some of these laws are dumb and contrived and ultimately really hurt us in the gun community. Um, in all reality, something like this is pretty darn practical for actual use. So first off, I will say when it comes to you know the flat range, I think there is definitely a lot of modern like uh, push towards things like SBRs and shorter barreled ARs like this. Um, and certainly there's a cool factor. They do seem pretty cool being all compact. And then, you know, this even has a PDW brace for maximum defense. So it's pretty easy to, you know, expand it and then get a decent um, kind of cheek weld and overall totally not shoulder it and shoot it. And so overall, something like this PDW brace not only aesthetically looks good, but it's pretty functional. Um, as far as making this gun very compact and very cool looking and it kind of has that um, honey badger we have at home kind of vibe to it but ultimately when it comes down to it um, what I think outside of like the flat range and LARPing and kind of looking cool, which certainly in my opinion is not a problem. Anyone that has an issue with LARPing at the range is a already suspect person, you know, ultimately when it comes down to it, I should just say like out and out guns, um, especially when it comes to collecting firearms, shooting firearms at the range, that's something we do for fun. We do for enjoyment and, you know, regardless to how realistically realistic you want to take it or whatnot, you know, you should do things that you enjoy, right? That's why some people own sports cars. It's not, um, you know, speeding and racing are not practical things, but, you know, it's nice to have a car that looks nice, that can be potentially loud, you know, things that, that bring you joy, right? And so firearms, regardless to the shape, the size, the magazine capacity, um, are guns that can bring you joy. And so in my opinion, first, first form or, you know, the first kind of cool factor is important and valuable, but more than just being a flat range LARPerator, so to speak, um, these do have some serious and very nice function. And the first one for me is being a truck gun. Now, um, I don't think they usually leave firearms in vehicles indefinitely, but um, one big use case for me that I like is when I go camping, especially in Alaska, there's a lot of different uh, wildlife and creatures out there that look to do you harm, right? So especially in um, states like mine, you know, completely legal to have this in your truck and to have something like a truck gun. So for me, the first use case, realistic use case for a PDW is a, as a truck gun. And whether you have this chambered in 300 blackout, whether you have it chambered in 5.56, this one is admittedly chambered in 5.56, but I also have a short barrel AR upper chambered in 300 blackout as well. And so something like this, um, 
you know, being chambered in a decent rifle caliber. You could also um, step it up to 6.5 Grendel, which would be another solid choice. Um, potentially definitely has a little bit more kinetic energy to it, but any way you slice it, all very capable um, rounds. And while I'm not gonna say you could take a grizzly bear with 223 or 556, certainly I will say um, one thing that is helpful in in the case of self-defense with a rifle like this against larger animals especially thing like moose is the fact that you can get off a large amount of rounds very quickly very controllably especially with a platform like this um in 556 five, with a 20 round magazine you can very quickly dump this magazine into something like a moose um, additionally to this not just a truck gun but um, snow machines stuff like that very easy to throw this on a a uh, snow machine or in a pack and have this on your person in case you need to deploy it once again in case of emergency and things that are nice about it in cases of something like this PDW brace, you have the ability to, you know, kind of make this a little bit longer and have that decent length of pull in case you do need to really get both hands on the firearm, really control that gun and get a, not necessarily longer shot, but once again, when we're talking about, you know, having to defend yourself and really dump all 20, 30 rounds out of your magazine, having as much control over that firearm as possible is the reason why that brace is nice. And so once again, you can have this form factor, then quickly, readily make this gun a lot more controllable and get rounds on target. So once again, um, I think having this as a truck wilderness gun is something that makes a lot of sense. And once again, gives you that ability and form factor that is small, reasonably compact and reasonably lightweight. Definitely not the lightest weight option, um, but yeah. Now the next one for me, and it kind of flows hand in hand with the um, kind of idea and notion of a truck gun is a survival rifle. I think a lot of people overlook this type I think a lot of people overlook this type of gun and immediately say that this is the type of gun that you use to harm other humans. But once again, as we just talked about with the relative size of this firearm, I think that this is an excellent survival rifle, particularly speaking, um, if we're talking about like aircraft, um, if you, you know, fly a bush plane, something like that. Um, if I was doing that type of stuff, I would 100% probably have this with the 300 blackout upper um, with some supersonics for the greater kinetic energy out of a shorter barrel. Uh, but either way, either 6.5 Grendel or 300 Blackout, this would 100% make a superb um, bush rifle for pilots because once again, um, I would probably vary some subsonic 300 Blackout, some really, really soft shooting, weak loads. And then I would also probably put some, you know, uh, supersonic, um, kind of like high velocity, really strong loads. And the reason why I would do that is the subsonics for smaller game animals. Um, once again, it's not gonna be optimal, but the 300 Blackout was designed to, with its subsonic loadings, mimic the same kinetic energy as 45 ACP. And I have, um, in survival practice, legally taken um, grouse with 45s. Now, once again, you're really gonna wanna shoot towards the head because you wherever you hit, it's going to cause a lot of damage. But but if you headshot something like a grouse um, with a 45, you are going to basically take its head off, but you're gonna leave and preserve the body um, so you can eat it. So with something like this, once again, where we talked about that added controllability, I would load some very weak uh, subsonics in it and use the ability, the control that this firearm offers to get accurate headshots on grouse. And then of course, once again, leave those supersonics in there in case you have to fend off something like a moose, something like a bear, um, that would give you a really, really wide range of capability with this type of weapon platform or firearm platform. And so for me, I think this as a 
you know, like kind of survival rifle. Once again, a lot of people look at this and they're like, oh, that's tactical, that's, that's not a survival gun. A lot of people are very weird in this day and age where, you know, they think that a survival rifle has to be a single shot 22 or a single shot 410 or an over under. And it's like, those are historically survival rifles. But at the same time too, historically, they didn't have this um, even 50 years ago. So um, as far as survival rifles go, if I was, you know, operating out of things like a boat, out of like on rivers, if I was operating out of a plane, especially a plane um, in Alaska, I would 100% throw something like this uh, in the in the aircraft because once again pretty lightweight pretty easy throw a couple magazines you know have a magazine of you know loaded down um, subsonics have a couple magazines of loaded up supersonics and uh, just call it a day at that and so overall form factor very very good um, so anyways the one of the other really good platform and use cases for this, of course, in more urban and more in dense environments is if the need be having this as a pack rifle. Um, now this one is still a little bit big because this is a 10.5, 5.56 um, barrel. You can go with shorter barrels all the way down to, I think the lowest or the smallest um, 5.56 barrel I saw was a 5.5 inch, which is effectively half the size of this. Um, one, if I was to personally step down from this, I'd probably recommend like a 7.5 because that 5.5 inches, it's basically a portable flashbang. Um, so it's gonna be brutal for the shooter. It's gonna be brutal for <laughs> anyone involved. Um, it's not gonna be a pleasant experience, but the extra two inches does give you a little bit of burn time, dwell time, and you know, a couple inches does tend to make the difference. So um, with this, I think the 10.5 is one of the more practical, shorter barreled. Um, of course, the 11.5 is another great one. But one of those two barrel lengths is one of the more practical barrel lengths. Of course, um, your Mark 18s were, you know, 10.5 to 11.5. So this is probably the the minimum you want, but you could probably step down to a 7.5 and with the right PDW brace and or stock, depending on how you roll, this will probably fit in a backpack in one piece. Just remember, like I said, with the shorter the barrel, the less accuracy, the less distance, the less power, the less everything you're going to get. So not necessarily the best, but not the worst. So those are some of the biggest reasons, in my opinion, of why something like a PDW, and this is essentially what I'd consider, you know, a short barreled AR, whether it's a pistol, whether it's an SBR, um, your short barreled ARs, even short barreled AKs fit a lot of these same use case points. And I think that they're both pretty much equally effective, especially in different chamberings and different flavors, basically the same thing. Um, of course, the ARs are a little bit more modular, but I would make sure that if you are gonna go this route, get a PDW stock or brace. Once again, this is a maximum defense brace um, that is PDW and they're designed to be as compact as possible. Of course, if you step down to something like an MPX um, or an MCX, you get a folding option pretty easily, but then um, I'd say probably like a 7.5 to 10.5 or 11.5 barrel is what you're going to want for that. And so overall, when it comes down to a PDW, these definitely aren't just range toys. I mean, of course, the argument could be made that like, oh, this is just a range toy kind of thing. And once again, this does see time at the range too. I'm not saying that you shouldn't shoot it at the range because you should. And if it brings you joy, absolutely go for it. But this notion that PDWs or short barreled ARs are only for people who are fakers, LARPers, is just completely null and void. These things serve a ton of use and function. And while originally the use case for short-barreled uh, AR rifles in special forces was for CQB, for room clearing, for house clearing, for going, you know, like house to house or to clear out large complexes and buildings uh, was the original use case of rifles like this. Um, on the civilian side of things, once again, having this as a truck gun, having this as a plane gun, boat gun, having this as something that is essentially kind of that ranch rifle um, can be very effective. And uh, essentially anywhere you would have used something like an M1 carbine, this is a totally 
solid contender to something like an M1 carbine or the ranch rifles such as the, the Ruger Mini 14. And so even Ruger Mini 14s are still a pretty solid ranch rifle, but this realistically gives you a lot of that capability in a very compact uh, package. Once again, you know, this is it fully extended in its full you know, extension configuration, but it gets nice and short too. So you can get it very compact and once again, you can certainly use it like this. You can certainly, you know, get on the gun, shoot it if you have to, but definitely preferable to rip that brace back out and uh, get a little bit better length of pull. Um, but yeah, so in my opinion, um, these things are totally useful and a lot of people love to just crap on them because I think once something, I find it really funny, I think in the broad scheme of YouTube, I think once something becomes very mainstream and a lot of people are like, hey, that's a great idea. Those same people that were like the early adopters turn and they're like, oh no, it's a terrible idea. And if you do that, you're dumb. And it's like, in all reality, you know, there are a lot of us and I realize even making this video, there's a lot of us that aren't extreme outdoorsmen or people who would necessarily fit into using this as a you know pilot kind of survival rifle but um, for those who do I'm more power to them but these are still relevant applicable applications and uh, I think you know definitely there is solid reason to choose something like this for an urban and also um, outdoor survival rifle. Um, once again, even throwing this in a larger kind of wilderness wintertime survival pack would be another solid application for this type of uh, piece of equipment, if you will. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed um, the breakdown here and uh, hopefully this was useful constructive and uh, if not hopefully at least you learned something and what were entertained by this whole thing if you'd like a breakdown of this pdw and actually you know me go over each individual portion of this definitely let me know i will make a follow-up video and actually go over this entire thing as a whole i've kind of briefly mentioned some things and i'm sure you guys can kind of look and see brand names and tell some other stuff but yeah any Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.